Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi wa azwajihi wa zuriyyati ajma'in I want to think aloud about uh, a few issues primarily to add like in my other videos primarily to clear my own thoughts and learn from this moment of reflection and obviously this moment of reflection is an open-ended reflection if it has to be a learning process you're always learning otherwise we don't learn anything so the issue I want to talk about is the issue of what are the basis of our critique of modernism and what are its uh, implications so critique of modernity what is our essential critique of or what are the basis of our critique of modernity and I want to focus on essential reasons only The basis for our critique of modernity is primarily the fact is what modernity universalizes is the worship of desires. And different ideologies, different ideologies within modernity are different forms of the same worship of desires. And the core civilization of modernity is capitalism primarily because capital or the sovereignty of capital is the logical consequences of the worship of desire. That's why no modern uh, ideology in its essence can transcend capitalism, whether it is liberalism or Marxism or socialism or feminism or masculinism or nationalism or humanism of any form. They are all worship of desires in different forms. And as worship of desire, they can't transcend capitalism because capitalism is the logical consequences when you consistently worship your desires. That's the first, first thing. So, if you want to So the first thing is modernity universalizes worship of desire and the second is all modernist ideologies are different forms of this worship of desire and number three um, capitalism 
is the logical consequences of this worship of desire. So capitalism is the underlying civilization which results when we logically consistently worship our desires. Okay. Okay, so human beings have worshipped desires Human beings or mankind is a better word because I'm not sure that human beings are the same the same concept as mankind. Mankind or womankind. <laughs> mankind um, has you know worship desires uh, Um, throughout their history so that's not something new and they have worshipped desires in different forms in the forms of you know in the form of individualism in the form of uh, communitarianism of different sort in the form of uh, other you know types which we have mentioned. So what differentiates modernity from those past eras? Or does it? Obviously we think that uh, modernity is a unique period in human history as far as worship of desires is concerned. And we end up worshipping desires because desires are central to human uh, existence. Without desires we can't exist as mankind. Um, or as animals so desires are essential so there's something essential but worship of desire is not essential that is avoidable so it's a natural step a natural mistake a natural transgression with uh, being with imagination and freedom to transition from fulfilling their desire in order to sustain themselves and enjoy themselves and entertain themselves within limits to worshipping those desires. Um, and human beings have done that throughout the history as well. But we can't say that human there has been modernity or modernist ideas throughout human history. So what, what differentiates uh, previous human history from modernity? So this question arises because what differentiates previous human history from modernity in terms of worship of desire i think what differentiates um, mm, sorry should go back what differentiates human history from modernity the rest of human history from modernity is the fact that with modernity we have a philosophy philosophy is an ideology which justify this worship of desire on a grand rational and consistent consistent basis so although before in human history there were ideologies even but mostly was a of practical nature and if there were ideologies those ideologies were you know underdeveloped and they didn't have hegemony anywhere 
uh, they 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 were mostly you know uh, whims or underdeveloped uh, longings, like Babur said. Babur beesh kosh ke zindagi dubara nis. Things like that. Not uh, rationally justified ideologies. So that's what differentiates. Uh, okay, so far so good. Now, why do we reject uh, worship desire? Like, there can be theoretical grounds as well as practical grounds. Of our rejection of this worship for desire. Obviously, practical grounds, and we reject it on both grounds, but the main reason for its rejection is theoretical, not just practical. And I'll get back to that, but we also reject it on practical ground in the sense that practically it's self destructive self-destructive for human in the long run to worship desires at every level that's the practice but on the theoretical level and it's more substantial and more uh, telling level we reject worship of desires because we think that what should be followed is oh my gosh I can't figure out how to so on theoretical level we reject worship of desire because desires If you worship desire, if desires are dominant over you, they hide truth from you. And especially specifically the truth or al haq the reality. And you can't see the reality as it is, and you imagine reality according to your own desires. So that's why transcending desires is actually essential for uh, seeing the reality as it is. And if we aren't able to transcend our desires, and if we are worshipping desires or if desires are dominant on us, then obviously we can't transcend desires. Transcending desire obviously doesn't mean that abandoning or rejecting all desires or not fulfilling essential desires. If you do that, you will not be able to sustain yourself. But what we mean by transcending desire, desires is you discipline your desires in such a way that they are not dominant on you. They are just doing their essential function. So when you, unless you transcend your desires, you can't see the reality as it is and you see the reality from the uh, spectacles of desires. So you, you, your vision of reality is distorted. And you imagine the reality as you desire, in a sense. So it's not a total fabrication, because otherwise you won't be able to exist. <laughs> but it's, the, it's a conception of reality intermingled with or tarnished with uh, your desires.
So if you care for the truth, if you care for the reality, if you want to see the reality as it is, you need to transcend your desires. And you can't transcend your desires if you are worshipping your desire. That's why the key of purification of your desires and self, especially your lower self, is not an option, not uh, an option. It's an essential thing. Because unless you purify yourself, your heart, your heart would not be uh, clean um, mirror which reflects the reality as it is. It would be a heart tarnished with desires which is mirroring reality from the lenses of desires and that mirroring of reality is uh, a distorted version of reality. So, so that's that's the basic reason why we reject the worship of desires, and this is the basic reason why we reject modernity, and this is the basic reason why we reject different forms of reality. Uh, modernity and this is the reason why we can't take sides we can't say we reject uh, we reject individualism but but socialism or nationalism is fine we can't say that we reject feminism but masculinism is fine because they are all forms of different versions of worshipping your own desires. So the, 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 they all are basically hijabs, veils, between you and the truth. And unless you transcend this hijab, these hijabs, you won't be able to see the reality as it is. Okay. But I think... We can stop here and we'll continue, inshallah, this series, uh, which uh, probably we'll name as a critique of uh, modernity, in a fundamental critique of modernity or something like that, or the foundations of a critique of modernity. Okay, see you in the next session, inshallah.